So every one of these filters I've showed you, to service it, you gotta drop this cup off. Okay, it's full of fuel. Get diesel fuel on your hands. We're living in this environment, right? We got upholstery, we got woodwork. You know, you can lose any down in the bilge, it's gonna stink. There's only uh, diesel fuel, the smell of burnt diesel or unburnt diesel will make you sick real quick. Seasick, right? The smell of it. So you get it on your hands, it doesn't go away. So here we are living in this environment. We want to minimize the spillage and stuff. So how are we gonna do that? With this, there's, there's no real way. You, as careful as you are, you're gonna drop something. Your hands are all slippery with diesel fuel. You can use rubber gloves, um, but then you don't get a, a real good feel of things. You're fooling around with little tiny bolts and they're all slippery. Um, you drop something, it's gonna make a mess. You gotta clean it up right away. So all those uh, blue shop towels, I use rolls and rolls and rolls of those things and put it all down everywhere. You gotta get a, some kind of a pan that's gonna fit under there. You gotta catch it all. And then we gotta get rid of the fuel that we got rid of. We gotta get rid of the filter and the fuel that we drained out. And then reassemble it all. So where are we gonna put all this stuff? If we're out there and we gotta change the fuel filter, where are we gonna put all that crappy stuff? We're stuck with it. Okay, bad design. Okay, there's a better way. There's a better way. So the single most in expensive thing on your diesel engine other than the, you know, the physical engine itself is the fuel injection pump, okay? Um, is, as much as several thousand dollars to rebuild a fuel injection pump. So, and they're so finely built, um, here's the pumping elements out of a little uh, two-cylinder Yanmar uh, uh, pump. We have a barrel and a plunger. Oh, that one's stuck in there. I can't even get it apart. <laughs> Must have got rusty. Okay, so we've got a, a, a plunger and a barrel. If I take this barrel out and put it in the cold, just outside the door, and I get one of you guys to hold on to this plunger, okay. when you bring them back in, if we can maintain that temperature differential, they will not fit. Just the temperature differential. They're, they're that finely honed, okay? That's why diesel fuel injection components are expensive. And because of that, you want to pass that around? Yeah, this one is. is that rust? Yeah, it probably got a little bit of moisture on it and, and it rusted in there. Yeah, and that's what happens. We get water sitting in your fuel system. This time of year when it shut down, any moisture that's in your system rusts internally, right? You pull it, uh, diesel fuel injection parts, uh, pumps apart or, or injectors, any rust in there, any, any kind of pitting like that, you, you change it. And they're, they're, uh, they're very expensive, right? So. Um, Anyway, uh, so we got to keep that water out of, out of there. Uh, it does all kinds of damage. Water's not a lubricant. Uh, in these systems, the diesel fuel is the lubricant. So your first line of defense is your primary fuel filter. So we said this is a primary. Will it take the water out? Yeah. Okay, can we see the water in there? No. Uh, we drain it off? Yeah, sort of. Um, you know, um, it, you know, we, we're going to end up changing the filters routinely uh, just to, to guess to find out whether we've got a problem or not because uh, we can't see anything. So we want a filter we can see through. So this Raycor has got a see-through bowl and it's a turbine style thing. The fuel comes in and it comes around and it goes around this turbine thing and it, and it spins out any of the um, uh, impurities and the water. It's all heavier and the spinning action dumps it out and then it lands in the bottom of the bowl. And then the clean fuel comes back up through, goes through the filter and off we go. Right, so you can accumulate a lot of water in this thing before it's gonna overwhelm the filter. And somebody asked a question earlier if the filters were made. Most of these um, filters, they're just paper filters. They're not gonna stop water. Once the water gets to the certain level, it's gonna suck it through, right? These ones here, uh, Raycor, it won't necessarily stop it from sucking through, but they have this product they put on some, it's like Scotch Guard, they call it Aqua Block, and it, it actually makes the uh, water beat up and fall off the filter uh, before it gets sucked through. Right. So this particular one uh, is rated for 60 gallons per hour. So for some of our small engines, that's overkill. We wouldn't go through 60 gallons in a season, right? But the, the fact it's got this large capacity, um, uh, these things, um, you put a drain plug on here, you can see it. There's also a spot, an option for you can put a, a water probe in there and, and wire it up to your helm. And when the water gets so high, it sets a light and you say, oh, time to go, go
go drain the rake horse off. In powerboat application, that's really desirable. This particular one has a, a filter built in. $12. And here's how you change it. No tools. Drain some fuel off the bottom of it. Get the impurities out. Yes, it's got an O-ring. The O-ring's there where you can deal with it. New O-rings come in the package. Then we, some kind of little probe. Where did that globe plug go there? Here. Yeah, there we go, just need something. They have little handles on them, but they're hard to get a hold of, so you just need something to flip it up so you can get your finger on it. Can't get my fat fingers down in there. Flip that up. They actually have handles on them. Two little handles. They seal to the stem like that, so you, you lift it up, let it dribble. You've got your uh, plastic gloves on. You've got a Ziploc bag handy. When it's done dribbling, in the bag it goes, off the boat it goes. The fuel stays in there instead of we've got this bucket now we've got to get rid of, right? Okay, so any of the impurities have already gone down here, so we just got fresh fuel in this part of the world. So we take our new filter. They come in 30, 10, and 2 microns. Uh, for powerboat use, I wouldn't go down to 2 microns, but I'd certainly go to the 10s. Uh, for sailboat use, 2 microns. Remember, this thing's got the capacity to pass 60 gallons per hour. Uh, we're, we'd be lucky if we do a gallon per hour, right? Um, so this is even a 2 micron. It's going to be forever before it's actually overcome uh, plugged. That's it. Set it down in there. Now, depending on the application, you've got to top the filter up. We've got air in there now. We haven't run the system. We haven't let air into the system yet. We've got to top this filter up. So if you've got a jug of uh, fuel on board, you can top it up, fill it right up, put the lid on. Uh, failing that, um, if this is lower than the tank, you open the tank valve and wait for it to fill by gravity, put the lid on, tighten it down. Okay? But you have to get the air out of here. You've got to fill it up. Now, having said that, I've seen these things running with over an inch of air space in here, and it hasn't sucked air into the system yet.